This video was sponsored by RxDB, a reactive offline first database for JavaScript applications that brings the power of document-based NoSQL to the client side. And it just so happens to solve a particular problem I've had in my Angular apps for years. Let's use my QuickList app as an example. We've talked about this concept before. Uh, in an ideal world of reactive and declarative code, we would have our data be reactive right from the source and it would remain in this unbroken reactive stream until it reaches its destination, often the template where the data is being displayed. But a problem I often run into when dealing with apps that store client-side data is that the data can't be reactive from the source. If I'm storing data in local storage, for example, the local storage API just does not provide an observable stream of data changes. So I end up needing some kind of imperative step to handle pulling data into the application from storage and saving that same data back to storage again when it changes. But RxDB directly addresses this issue for me. Instead of having to try to make something that is inherently not reactive reactive, it makes the storage itself reactive. And then this all fits perfectly into the reactive and declarative state management approach I've been talking about lately with Signals and RxJS. It actually makes it easier and more powerful. This is my old code before introducing RxDB. I'll let you check out the previous video for an explanation of this approach in general, but we have our data sources which are observable streams. We subscribe manually to these and specify how to update the state in the signal as a result of each one emitting. Now let's check out the code with RxDB. The only time we actually set the state now is with this one source where we are fetching the data from the RxDB database. We take whatever that is and set it in our signal. Then for the rest of our sources, we just perform whatever operations against the database that we need. You'll find that RxDB supports the typical NoSQL methods you would expect and uses the standard Mango query language. So if we need to add a new record to the database, we do this. If we need to update an existing record in the database, first we get the record and then we update it like this. Any changes we make to the data are automatically going to be reflected in our state signal. Since we are using a reactive RxDB query for this source, anytime the data changes in the database, it is going to automatically update our signal. This is cool in itself. Not only is all of this reactive, but we also get the features of a typical document-based NoSQL database on the client side. But RxDB also supports syncing this local offline first data to a remote backend which is great because data that's only stored locally can tend to have a way of vanishing one way or another. There are different backends you might want to sync this to, but CouchDB will always have a special place in my heart. So let's take a quick look at how you would do that. First, you'll need a CouchDB database hosted somewhere. I've just set one up locally using Docker. We'll just need to make sure we create a database in CouchDB that matches the one we configured in our app. And I've just made the database completely public, but you'll probably want to set up some kind of auth depending on what exactly you are doing. Then we can start the replication by using the replicate couch db function. And that's it. Now, anytime we make a change to the data from the client side, it will automatically be reflected in the backend. And if we change data in the backend, it is going to be automatically reflected in the front end. Obviously, there's a whole lot more to know about RxDB. So if you want to check it out, you can find a quick start guide on their docs website, along with a link to the open source GitHub repo. You can find all of that at rxdb.info. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you around for the next one.